Hello, everybody, and welcome to a really special edition of Holiday Traditions with Christmas Village. I am the Vice Chair, Craig Bielik, and today I am joined by not one, but two Irmas. We have Erna Hernandez right here and Irma Silvanos right here. Savala. Is that correct? Did I get that right? Savala. Savala. Okay, I knew I was going to make a mistake. Might yeah. as well get it out of the way right when we start. And we are so happy today to bring you a traditional recipe for, what are you guys going to call it? Enchiladas. Enchiladas, yeah. Uh, confession here before we get started. I love enchiladas. <laughs> Always. All kinds. And today you're going to make chicken and just chicken or chicken and cheese? Or? So it's a regional... Uh, so it's... It's good. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. You know what? There's no need to explain it because we can just get right into it. We want everyone to know that Ogden is a very diverse place uh -huh. and we appreciate our diversity. Love the, the fact that there are a lot of people uh -huh. and a lot of cultures that are present in Ogden. And we're all kind of stirred into one pot and we love it. And we want to make sure that we are sharing culture and tradition with some of our viewers out there. That's why you guys are here today. Uh -huh. Uh, the real purpose of you guys being here today is to feed Craig. That's all. That's the whole, that's the whole purpose. Of it. The reason we set this all up. But no, uh, why don't you guys launch into it and we'll talk as we go, okay? Okay. Yeah? So my mom is from Michoacan and these are enchiladas from Michoacan. Okay. So uh, that's where my mom um, was, that's how my mom was brought up with these comfort food. It's one of our favorite comfort, comfort foods. It has become kind of a holiday dish just because that's when we have the most time to really dive into making them as good as they are. Okay, start with describing what you need to have on hand to make all of this happen. Because you guys got a lot of bowls and things up there. You need to know. <laughs> so let's see, we start with the sauce. So then the sauce would have chile, chile guajillo, and this is optional, chile puya, um, garlic, and onion. That's, uh, oregano also, and two tomatoes. That's just for the sauce. For the sides, we're gonna have potatoes and carrots. And then obviously the tortilla to be dipped into the sauce. And then these are mostly, this goes inside the enchiladas, the onion, grilled onion, cheese, and then we'll use lettuce as a kind of a topping. Okay. And also uh, Mexican sour cream, which is um, creamier than most, okay. is more runny, and... Tastes uh, a lot better out there. Yeah, it, it has more of a whole cream flavor than sour cream. Where can you get that? Is that available at like Harmons and Smiths or do you need to go more to a specialty store? The store. Yeah, the Mexican store, definitely. Sometimes it'll be at, at, at Harmons in the, where they have the Mexican cheese as well, which is queso fresco. Okay. Um, and then, let me think. Yes. And then this recipe is more of my mom's recipe because she uses olive oil um, and sea salt. Okay, very good. Did you learn this recipe from your mother? Uh, I learned from my, from my friends because I, I, I came in here and I couldn't um, find uh, this kind of enchilada. So I, I asked them about the recipe, okay. and they kind of told me how to make it. They, they taught you a little more about doing it. Then. Yeah. So it's like, okay, let's do it. Let's get into it because <laughs> you describing all those ingredients made me super hungry. Okay. <laughs> really, really wanting to dig into this. Okay, we're gonna start with the chicken. Okay. 
from there. Chicken, a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil. Okay. Goes into the pan right there. Now, have you heated that pan up in advance? Is it hot or uh, does it matter? It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. Oil, the oil. Uh huh. And you can use as much or as little as you'd like. Mm -hmm. You can coat it. I guess that's more of a personal preference, right? Mm-hmm. just want to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> And then, okay. Now she's cutting the chicken over there mm -hmm. into strips about a little wider than your fingers, mm -hmm. maybe two fingers each. Is that the best way to do it? Uh, yes. It's a, it, well, you can, it, you can use uh, the, the uh, other parts of the chicken. Okay. And I like, uh, I like um, breast. You started with a boneless, skinless breast. Mm -hmm. But if you if you want to start with a, a whole chicken and throw in leg or wing meat exactly. or- Exactly. That's, um, this mm -hmm. is found, in, this is like a very popular street food. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right, just for, I think, to make it easier, they'll, they'll sell it with like a quarter of leg, you know, a thigh sure. of chicken. Sure. Just a whole piece. Yep, she just added a little bit of that pink sea salt. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, so now we're gonna... And what is going on in this pot right here? The, the, um, the chili. The chilies? Okay, so then what my mom did is we deranged it. I don't know if you guys can see that. So when you buy it, it comes like this whole. So then you can just tear this little part, the little tail off. You can use your fingers to just open it. You can use a knife, that's probably easier. <laughs> but I'm just gonna go ahead and tear it open. Okay. Those are the little veins that you take out. Okay. It's really easy to see. Okay, so you don't want the veins or the seeds in there, right? Yep, and then you can you want pour the, the seeds out. Shell or the skin, I guess, is maybe a better way. Yes, and then you just use the shell. Okay. Um, and you wash them and you throw them in the Yes, water. you make sure you wash them. And then over here in this pot, you bring the water to a boil. Okay. And then it's important that once it's boiling, you, after you throw them in, you cover, um, you turn off the water. Okay. And then, um, you just kind of so let right, it stew in there in the exactly, hot water. Exactly. Right? Okay. Yes, because you don't want to boil them for too long or they will become bitter. Okay. And, and then your sauce will be too bitter. Well, we can't have that. <laughs> no, we cannot have that. You got to do it just right. Mm -hmm. How many times have you two made this recipe together? Um, it's a few times. I'm trying to think. Um, probably since my kids were born. Uh, so my daughter is ten. My son is eight. Uh huh. Uh, because um, we like to share it, uh, this recipe with them. Sure. Sure. A few years. Well, you work together so well. You need this more <laughs> often. Maybe you need to have more children. That's there what. You go. That's what. That's what the whole thing is. <laughs> And so, grandma says, yes, have more children. <laughs> Bring some yeah. grandchildren. Yeah, we have uh, the, um, the, uh, the uh, carrots and potatoes stew. Where, where, where do they go? Uh, this is the story of my life, trying to find something. Just that's had that's it. Okay, I'll get it. Two moments ago, did you find what you need? No. Yeah. No and yes. I heard both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's already. There we go. It's already. Okay. You are pulling potatoes and carrots out of that pot where they've been boiling. Yes. So my mom, to save time, she um, started steaming the carrots from the potatoes. Mm -hmm. While that is steaming, she, she likes to start on the sauce, right? Um, where she boils that water and then lets it simmer. And then she likes to work on the chicken. Um, this is done. Yeah. You're ready. That's ready? Okay, so just let it simmer. Mm -hmm. And when it's ready, you can see it simmering over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So welcome back to the podcast. This is a lot of fun. We should have been doing this years ago. We just didn't really think of it. <laughs> but with all the changes we've had to make with Christmas Village this year because of what's going on in the community and of course our concern to make sure that we keep everybody safe. We had to, you know, forego a few of the things that we've done in the past. We couldn't do our parade, we couldn't do our opening ceremonies. So we thought it might be fun to do something like this, which we can do. And in, in lieu of it. Okay, so it's time to flip the chicken, so to speak. Okay, so then um, my mom likes to do is to just uh, round one side. Okay. And then um, flip it so that it rounds on the other side. And then that chicken would be ready. I can smell already with the mask. I can smell something. <laughs> I can smell something good, and I don't know how to describe it. Do you both live in Ogden City? Yes. Yeah, and have been here for a long time. Uh huh. Almost all my life now. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I looked here. I can do the math, right? <laughs> I was I was thirteen, so I was. Known Ogden most of my life. I went to Ogden High School. Yeah. Uh huh. I, I went to Ben Loma, but you can still like. Oh, okay? that's you right. You can still like, even though in Ogden High and Ben Loma, you know, <laughs> have that push pull. You, we can still be friends, can't we? Yes, mm -hmm. we can still be friends. Yeah. And of course, you guys go to Christmas Village ever? Yes, I recently went with my kids. It's definitely our favorite. We love to go to the. Usually the Thanksgiving parade when they light up the light. This year we just started went last weekend and we really love um, seeing all the different houses. It's always interesting, isn't it? And a good variety. Is there anything that's your favorite? Um, so, okay, we got really cold uh -huh. and we didn't, um, but we wanted to find my daughter's stuff. Last year, St. Joseph's Elementary had a house, uh -huh. and so we were looking for that this year. Okay. Did, did you find it? No. We got too cold. We got too cold. Well, we you know what's nice? The block. <laughs> <laughs> what's nice is it's still early in the month, and Christmas Village is open every day, okay. 5 p.m. to midnight. Every day, Sunday, every day, 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. to midnight, mm -hmm. all the way through New Year's Day. Yes. So I know a lot of families have a tradition. They have a certain night that they go down. Right. And they like to do it that. But, 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 if it does get too cold, you can go back another night. And right. It's always there. It's free admission. Yes. And, and, of course, plenty of parking. Do you have any trouble parking? No. That's great. No. There's lots of, lots of space to park. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now my mom is ready All right. to work, um, to blend the sauce. Okay. So, as you can tell, she let the, she, the chiles. So, so that they're soft. Um, it takes about the same amount of time, like if you let them simmer, about the same amount of time as the potatoes and the carrots to steam, okay. you know, so if you start that around the same time. Okay. I'm surprised by the potatoes and carrots. I think that most people, when they think of enchiladas, don't think uh, potatoes and carrots would be included. You know? Right, exactly. And so that's like the very, um, I guess what I was trying to explain earlier, for the these are region specific to each of them. Where my mom is from, they live in it. That the sauce that is made on the side is what really makes it very. Uh, now what's going on? Is that the garlic? Yeah. So she puts all okay. the chiles, the two tomatoes, the onion, the garlic, and the oregano. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that tomato in there, and I forgot yeah. that she had put it in there. I thought that maybe a red rubber ball had fallen in there somehow or something. Like that. Um, for anyone that's not familiar with the area, can you describe where Mitchell Pond is? Yeah, so the way I like to describe it, it's three hours away from Mexico City. Okay. And then um, right where Mexico starts to bend in that little alpha, that's where Mitchell Pond is, that little area. Okay. And I believe that Ogden has a pretty large population of people who uh, have family and may have even at one time hailed to mutual contracts. Yes. I, I think so. I've heard that a couple of times. Yes. 
Okay, the chicken is now going into another pot. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so we're just gonna set the chicken aside. Okay. And then... Um, is there a reason it has to go into another pot or could it have stayed in there? So just to save space at home, <laughs> we like to use, this, eh? yes, yeah. use the same pot. I was gonna say, usually if my wife, if okay. she's using another pot, the reason is because I'm doing the dish. Oh. And she wants to make sure, she wants to make sure I'm putting as much work in there. Look at that, look at that. Oh, look at this. No, no. Mercy, look at that tongue that is just mercy. Okay, so, okay, so, okay, so, Okay. So we're gonna, we've got a screener. Yes. Because the blender, no matter how good it is, it's gonna pop up everything, right? Exactly. Especially here. I don't have a vitamin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so it's Anyone can make the sauce, it's not, it, um, you know, in any blender. Yeah. Um, and then just make sure you strain it before you pour it in here. Now, this is going to be loud. Be very careful. Okay. So um, we, got some, we got some action going on here. Oh, wow. Look at that. I know you people out there watching cannot smell this, but boy, I wish you could. Because it is. It is very, very fragrant, and you can really smell it. You guys have been working. So this is, whoops, this is why we try to team pack here. That is a wonderfully rich, sort of deep brown and red color. That I know you can see. It's a little real, like a... Uh, 10 minutes from now. Okay. Until the sauce turn a little bit darker. I would, uh, then, then. Okay, so we're gonna. Boy, I'll tell you what, that, that looks good, smells good. A little bit. Uh -huh. Just the same juice that uh, from the chili. A little bit of juice coming in there from the chilies that mm -hmm. you used mm -hmm. to kind of thin that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the uh, climate like? In it, it's is it a, pretty sunny most of the time. It's a perfect climate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> not too hot, not too cold. Just right. Huh? Just right. Oh wow. Uh, I wish I was there today. It's like what 28 <laughs> degrees out there at, at the moment. Right. Oh, I can now. I can really smell it. I, yes. Oh, I can smell. I can just like. Really coming through, and it just smells, it just smells so great. Uh huh. What is Christmas like in Michoacan? We, um, it's yeah. fun. <laughs> it's very fun. Very fun. We start with the the. We start on the seventh thing. I think it's it's a week uh, before. Uh huh. Before uh, Christmas, uh, we start with the posadas. Every day, uh, um, three to seven, six, 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 a traditional Mexican thing, or is that just your family? Yes. No, that... we we like to stay up all night, and then at midnight, depending on the family, they'll do different things. So they'll have um, some like to go to church at midnight. Mm -hmm. Some like to um, sing to baby Jesus uh -huh. to because you know he's a newborn. 
So we like to sing to him to sleep. Yeah. And others, we just say, Feliz Navidad! <laughs> and just exchange gifts yes. at midnight. Uh, do you feel like it's important to preserve these traditions? Uh, you know, every generation a little bit slips away and you really have to work at it to keep it going. Mm -hmm. Is that important to you? Yes. Yeah, my mom tried, tries really hard to remind me, you know, to, and also um, to share things with my kids. Uh-huh. Um, we have, you know, just, so, um, yeah, <laughs> it's sure. important. Sure. So it sounds like it's a, sort of a larger celebration than in America, and also maybe a little more focused on family and religion, and maybe a little less on Santa Claus and you know, right. those sorts of things. Right. And sometimes, um, like, big, like, we have big malls, they'll have Santa Claus um, all the way up to Christmas, and then they'll also have. Another tradition that we have is the three wise men. And so you can go get your picture taken with the three wise men as okay. well. The That's very different. In America, <laughs> we don't pay much attention to the wise men. Why Why do you, Why is the, Why are the wise men mm -hmm. featured in the celebration? Um, it's, um, my family were very Catholic and um, according to the events, um, the wise men were the ones who brought gifts to Jesus, okay. and um, and that day was January sixth. Um, that's when they they were able to reach uh, baby Jesus, and then so yeah, so different like Mexico. That's usually the day um, where kids go to sleep. They leave a shoe out in front of the door. And then the next morning, there'll be a gift in your shoe. Oh, that, that's really cool. I think that's fun. It's kind of amazing. You know? I mean, around the world, leaving shoes out to get gifts and treat is, is quite often uh, included in their celebration. I should mention too, folks, that those of you watching at home, we are doing this demonstration in urban studios down on 25th Street. Uh, this place is fabulous, isn't it? It's so beautiful. It really is. And it is available to you if you would like to rent it for a party. Uh, they have this nice kitchen, <laughs> so you can... Uh, did she think I said it was her? It. Oh, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> oh, then we have a little bit of mask slippage. We will, no, we will, no, we love parties and we're always looking for space. Well, this is the place to do it. This is the place to do it. I mean, look at this. Look at this setup, this range and everything. Uh, what you can't see is behind us is a big room that you could fit easily 50 to 60 people in. Uh, Urban Studios also can provide you with chef if you don't feel like doing your own cooking. Uh, but these facilities are available to you. Go to urbanstudios.com if you want more information. And of course, we'll put a link on the Christmas Village page too to make sure that you can get that information if that's something that you choose to do. Uh, this is smelling so good. <laughs> so the, yeah, my mom is uh, constantly stirring um, so burn. that it doesn't burn oh, well not necessarily yeah. burn so it doesn't oh it's simmering sorry. oh okay okay it's simmering make sure mm -hmm. you are still yeah, because the sauce is gonna is gonna change the color yes i can already see it, 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 it. a little bit there mm -hmm. and so, you know the the really intriguing part about all this is you guys have done a lot of work but you haven't even used very many of these ingredients yet, so I just can't wait to see what's to come. Uh, she went and got a great big pan. Oh. There's something going on. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so let me think. Uh, let me think. This is I can move that. that, and then that's the chicken. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me, let me help that. All right, that's the pan, in case you guys have forgotten, that is the pan that contains the chicken. Mm -hmm. And it is sitting in there covered, so it doesn't get dry, probably. Mm -hmm. And this is the... the sauce, sauce is... It's almost done. Yep, it's, it's changing, changing colors. colors, we can see that. You guys are making a big pile of dishes over there. I sure hope I'm not doing them. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope we've, we've planned that into this uh, shoot that 
Someone is coming to do the dishes. And I love the pinata over by you. <laughs> yes. The, this was um, made by um, Derek. Derek. Yeah. Yes. I don't know his last name. Derek Williams. He did such a good job. And um, this is another one that my mom had ordered. And so this one. Um, so posadas, um, the they are our tradition, Mexican tradition, and so the uh, let's see. So when so when um, families, neighborhoods get together, mm -hmm. and um, like if it's two families or well, like the neighborhood, right? You'll choose a few people to be inside. Uh, the home, and then you'll choose a few people to be outside the home. And on a posada, what happens is you're singing a song that describes um, Mary and Joseph um, asking for shelter, um, which in Spanish would be posada, you know, to spend the night. So they're asking. Uh, oh, sir, please, could you please let me in? You know, my wife is pregnant and we need, you know, a night. And then the people inside the house will say, no, like, this isn't a hotel. Like, you know. There's no room at the end. <laughs> There's it's no gonna room. It's going to be seven days. No room at the end. Six days. No. Okay, so you're familiar with the song, or... I know that part of the story. The part of the story, <laughs> right? Sorry, I know it's more of a summary. I This is from what I know, not from what I have. I think you're doing a great job. Daddy, yeah. you know, and um and anyway, so there's a lot of singing there. Just for a moment, you just sing a, like, a few verses. And then at the end, of course, someone says, "Yes, of course you can come in, right? And stay." And then there's a big and then that's the celebration. You go in, you um and the family will have a piñata and then we'll have we'll stuff the piñata with things now because this is a community more of a community um event you want to you know, you want to save money you want to use what you have so you'll use fruit that is in season and you'll use um, also, very little candy, so you don't need as much candy as you would usually need. Okay. Is that why you have the fruit display over there with yeah. the fruit so, and nuts? And yeah. And all that? Um, so it's the season of like sugar cane, uh -huh. um, mandarins, uh, oranges, lima. I don't know if that's a lime in Spanish. Uh, sweet lime. Sweet lime. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And lots and lots of peanuts. And then this one that's called teco, tecojote. Mm -hmm. And um, this one grows in Mexico. Um, oh, and sometimes they'll have jicama. And then, I don't know, okay. Oh, and then these little candies, um, depending on the home, they might put, I, I remember when I was a kid, I don't know if it was a personal choice. They had them in front of the little um, nativity scene. Um, but yeah, these are tip um, traditional candies. So and they'll have, we don't use as many candies, but but you might throw a few in depending on. Right. Yeah. 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 I uh, we used to get oranges and lemons and things like that in our Christmas socks. <laughs> from my parents. I mean, what? Well, no, from Santa. Oh, Santa. That's oh, right. I'm sorry. Where did I make a big mistake? <laughs> Santa Claus would leave us oranges and lemons and things like that in our sock. And oh, I actually, I actually really looked forward to that when I was a kid. I just, I, I was very excited to find tangerines and lemons and all that. So while we're yakking away, your mother <laughs> is working like a beaver over there to get all this stuff ready. We've got a pan that she just put a little more olive oil in. And now comes the potatoes and the carrots and the onions. Okay. And it is drying up. And again, this is not something I would think it would be an interlock. I, I, I guess I just had a different recipe on my whole. <laughs> See, that's the reason that I that I learned to. Uh huh. 
Yeah. But they are very different. Yeah. And we're going to add a dash of salt. Yeah, when we moved here over 20 years ago, they weren't available everywhere. You couldn't just go to a restaurant and order this style. Really? The yeah. Yes. Maybe there's a place now, you know, mm -hmm. but we've continued to uh -huh. make them ourselves. Have you ever been tempted to open your own restaurant? That's something that ever came across your plate? <laughs> Mom says, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to work that hard. <laughs> it is very hard work to own restaurants. This is it's, it's over here by me, and I can smell it. That's really uh, what do you wonderful. Think? Really true. Okay, we're going to... Uh, we got out of... We the tortillas, so they don't... Okay. Yeah. They're not fully. Well, we like to describe it, describe them as not fully cooked when you buy them in the pocket. Um, make sure that you use um, something like this. What would you describe this? Like a flat, a flat iron sort of. Pan. Uh huh. Yeah, Craig's a, a master cook. I call it a flat pan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it sounds a regular name, but um, for those those folks out there that they they know what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Um, we like to have one at home that we just use for tortillas so that, you know, it doesn't smell like other food or anything like that. Uh -huh. So we like to just try to take that. You can use your hands or you can use your, what are they called? Where did they go? Your, uh, tongs. Tongs, or, uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I know they probably also have a different name. Uh, Christmas really needs to get a better host that knows the names <laughs> of pans and utensils yeah. and things like that. <laughs> Instead of a, uh, some bar. Griddle? No, griddle? No. A griddle. Yeah, you can, yeah, a griddle. Because sometimes you can yeah. use that for pancakes, right? And yeah, a griddle. That's a really good one. Excellent. Here. Oh, okay. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you think, um, most people probably have had enchiladas in some form or another. That's so true. That's what do you so think? True. What do you think? Do you think most people have had good enchiladas? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm not talking about like the frozen ones you get in the <laughs> store, but uh, these, they probably have never had any like this. So, I mean, are there restaurants that make pretty good enchiladas around? <laughs> I, I love I love her. She, she's like the, the, the like the best grandma. She's like, are you kidding me? No one has enchiladas like this. Yeah, I yeah, I agree with my mom is the best enchiladas. There you go. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna argue just by uh, based on smell because they just I they they're so it's so smells so good right here, right? Uh-huh. So then what she does is she uh, just kind of, what would you say, just try pan fry the uh -huh. potatoes and the carrots, um, you know, uh -huh. make sure the flavors come together, and the chicken. sauce, and the chicken. And uh, of course, you can set it aside, if, you know, separate, because I know some people don't like their food touching. Mm -hmm. um, we're just... And she added a few, a few labels, ladles full of, of sauce into there. Yes. But she didn't drown it or anything, right? She's not going to do that. Um, no, yeah, so don't drown it. Um, exactly. And chiladas here, they tend to be drowned in the sauce. And you'll, as, as you'll see in a moment, um, these are more like you would describe a fried tortilla with sauce. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, okay. Are there other traditional Mexican foods for Christmas? I, I know I know people talk a lot about tamales. Is that is that a real tradition or is that just something we talk about? Tamales? Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, right. definitely. We're not like let's say when we get together when we gather with the whole family. We're talking about my mom's big family, you know, siblings, seven brothers and sisters. Lots and lots of cousins. We definitely get someone to 
bring us tamales because okay. we don't want us to be in the kitchen sure. <laughs> making enchiladas. Okay, so, so I don't know if you can see this on camera, but we're going to bring it so, over there. Mm -hmm. um, she has dressed a plate with a few uh, whole leaves of lettuce. Mm -hmm. oh. And we've got a couple of tortillas already sitting inside. Okay. Ready to go. The little thing. And we're looking for another utensil again. And please don't ask me what it's called. <laughs> They're the You've already learned that Craig is not fluent. I don't speak fluent utensil. It's the little tongs that have the red. Oh, little tongs. That have the red. Oh. Uh, let me see if I can see something here. Is it this one right here? Oh, there we go. Oh, those ones. Yeah. Those are way more special. And of course, because you're working with chicken, you want to make sure you're always washing your hands. Yes. Keeping those things washed really well. Okay. That's, that's the reason that is this is um, a recipe that that you really really have to use a lot of steam salt so you, you end up with a, a, a lot of dishes. a lot of dishes yes yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they didn't they didn't tell me that part and I think I'm expected to do it <laughs> I give okay. to you <laughs> okay so then make sure everything is dry not wet. Okay. And then it's gonna be a long. Okay, so soak it one side, soak it on the other. Soaking that tortilla in the sauce on and both then, sides. And then it's going over to this pan. Okay. And another one's coming. Yeah. Yeah, I would recommend that you use something like this. Okay. Now the trick is not to manipulate it too much. Uh -huh. okay. You can you can uh, use uh, cheese and and onions or onions only or yeah. cheese only. Yeah, because some people like my kids, we just put cheese in them. Okay. You're adding the onions and the cheese, but you said both are optional. Mm -hmm. If you have children, that or, nothing. Mm -hmm. or nothing, or <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I know you guys can see that there. These uh, tortillas have been dipped in the sauce. Mm -hmm. They're in the frying pan. You add onion and cheese on top. And then you flip it and flip it. You got to keep flipping it. Uh -huh. Folding it. Oh, yeah. You, the the mm -hmm. fold is the thing. Now they're looking like the enchiladas that I know. Mm -hmm. And then they come out onto this beautiful plate with the lettuce garnish. Look at how hot that is. Set on there like an, only an expert can do. <laughs> Mine looked like she just placed them on there, but no, sir, that was, that was strategically set. And then we go back to the potato and the chicken and the carrots. Good heavens, can you guys see this? Look at that plate. If that doesn't make you hungry, there is something wrong with you. <laughs> and the chicken. Because look at that. Just steaming. Food. Oh my goodness. And then these are your toppings that are optional if you can put. Okay. So your that. optional toppings. What what is that you just put in there, Irma? Just cheese. Queso fresco. The okay. same one we put inside the enchilada. We put it yes. on top. Yes. And the crema. And then, as you can see, the consistency of this sour cream is very, oh, very yeah. Look at that. runny. This is art. This is not food. This is art. Take a look at that. Isn't that wonderful? And then, is that okay? And then, voila. voila. Are you kidding me? Just like that? Listo. Look at that. So oh, wow. I'm trying to think of words. Isn't that a beautiful dish? <laughs> and it looks so. It looks so good, and it smells so good. Is that a good view? This is wonderful for you guys to come and share this with us. And 
I, I wanted to put you on the spot and have you sing one of the traditional Christmas no. songs just because I wanted to hear it. You know, do you think you could do that as we as we as we end the program here? You see what I I'm going to give you a second to think about it, and I'm going to thank everybody out there for watching us. This is something we're trying this year to make up for the fact that we had to postpone a few of the Christmas Village activities. If you like it, please let us know. If you have ideas for future shows. Let us know. We'd love to share your culture. We'd love to share your food. And mostly, Craig would like to eat your food. So <laughs> please let us know. Thanks for watching for Christmas Village. Don't forget to visit us any night you want to, all the way through New Year's Day on 2021. It's free. There's free parking. We've got all the lights, most of the cottages. We had to postpone a few things like the Santa visits, but you're going to want to come down. Irma and Irma. Thank you so much for sharing this food. Look at that. Tell me that you don't want to eat that. I'm your host, Craig Bielek, and we will see you next time.